What's going on? Raven Ritual 666 back from the dead with some more Diablo 4 content. Today I'm excited to bring to you my new Blizzard build. It's a Blizzard Arclash hybrid that is just tearing its way through the new pit, ready for season 4. This is from the PTR test, and this is the build I will be running come season 4 launch. So follow me live on Twitch down in the description below if you'd like to see more or have any questions. This is by far not a pit 200 build, but it absolutely has the potential to carry. Um, due to the PTR, I'm kind of short on time, and since this is the last night, I just want to show you guys this video. So stay tuned for a, a quick bit of gameplay, but also for the skill tree around the things that you can chop and change while you are leveling. Because with the new master working and the new tempering system, you will not be able to get this perfect optimized build on your path to 100 and on your path through the pit. So this is my build, stay tuned. So, starting with the gear, firstly on our helmet, we will be running Snowguard's Bone Weave, and that's so we've got that damage reduction while in our blizzard and for three seconds after leaving it. Uh, one of the priority stats you want well, through the tempering system is the flame shield duration. Now, that is a priority that you want to get on your helmet, your chest piece, your amulet, <laughs> as well as your pants. Um, I'll get to that in a little bit, especially when looking at our skill trees. It's going to help us to keep up flame shield almost indefinitely now once you get the shako that is going to replace your snow guards but for while leveling uh, snow guards is best in slot uh, secondly you can do uh, freeze duration but if you get stun duration that's also good now and your chest piece you want to be running juggernauts um, again the flame shield duration through your tempering freeze duration if you don't get freeze duration stun duration is also fine now these aren't even optimized right like ideally shadow resistance to me is garbage I would much rather get total armor. Uh, also, you will see through all my gear that I haven't even maxed out the master working, and I'm already up to a, like a tier 80 pet and cruising with ease. I'll probably hit 100 by the end of the night before the PTR, but I just won't have time to put this build video together. Um, so, with the gloves, we are running Fists of Fate. It is a massive flat damage increase. Uh, the aspect is quite important. You want probably over 250% to make it worthwhile. But the amount of crowd control effects that this applies is just huge when it comes to boss damage. For your pants, uh, you want to be running Via's Mastery. We will be using Via's Mastery just for the damage reduction, which is very important for those high tiers of hit. It'll make you have a much easier leveling experience. For bosses, though, it is better to swap to Tybalt's. Uh, with the unstoppable you're getting from Flame Shield and from Teleport. Next, looking at the boots, Isu's Heirloom, best in slot, uh, massive crit chance bonus, uh, very good. For our weapon, you want to run Accelerating. Uh, attack speed is very important with Blizzard, so that you're getting that consistent damage per second. For your necklace, uh, we want to be running Ice Spikes, it's a general Blizzard build, and uh, you want to be running Flame Shield Duration and Damage. Uh, I've got damage to close, so not even perfectly optimized. Tau Rashes is absolutely insane this season because not only is it good before, but now with your lucky hit tempered affixes on your offhand and your wand, you can apply a lucky hit chance to apply shadow damage and lucky hit chance to apply poison damage. So if you look right here, and let me show you for a second, you are going to get five stacks of tower rashes which you can see is almost consistently up so you are going to get millions of damage just through being able to prop five props of tower rashes so that is uh best in slot and it's going to be important for every build this season every build should be running tower rashes because you can get those five props we're running umbral just for the resource but if you have really good resource management you don't necessarily need that you could use moonrise to prop more damage from art clash 
and we'll talk about that when we're looking at the skills around what's best in slot. Um, ideally, Ring of Starless Skies will go straight into this spot. Now, damage to close, um, resource cost reduction, just um, we're using Blizzard, so it, it's mana heavy. And that's why we've decided to use Arclash, because we can't be running another core skill. We don't have the mana for it, for how quickly we're casting Blizzard, and that's why we, we're building using Arclash to also get those consistent Tau Rasha procs. Now, for your last offhand, uh, just to focus, um, cooldown reduction is very important on this build. As much cooldown reduction as you can get, and as much flame shield duration, is what's going to help you to stay almost indefinitely in flame shield. Uh, without the time in the PTR, I I'm yet to get there. So, Jumping over next into the skills. Now, this is where the build really comes into fruition, right? So, initially, you just go one point in Arclash. One point into Enhanced Arclash, one point into Reducing Your Cooldowns, very nice. One point into Firebolt, very different for the Basics tree. That's just because we're using Firebolt as an enchantment to apply that burning damage. That's helping with our Tau Rashes. And Arclash, when we're using a Basic, is also giving us that consistent proc of Tau Rashes. Now, when we're using Arclash, we are getting the value out of Unstable Currents. And Unstable Currents is giving us Attack Speed, which is helping with our Blizzard DPS. So come back, you don't need to put the full 5 points in there, you can allocate them elsewhere depending if you need resource or uh, if you're needing uh, to apply more lucky hit. <clears throat> one point into Frozen Orb, uh, one finally into Greater Frozen Orb, this is going to make for our second enchantment slot. Frozen Orb is how we are applying Vulnerable, because every like 3 casts of Blizzard we get a free Frozen Orb and that has a 40% chance to apply Vulnerable, very good to have. Five points in a flame shield. We want the duration. One here. You could run either or. Uh, the stun is probably better for crowd control, but I just like the healing. It just feels good to have, especially in the pit. One is a teleport all the way through the shivering teleport for the DR. Pretty straightforward. One point into elemental achievement for a chance to reset one of our defensive skills. I run two in a glass cannon. You can take one out of the basic and go all three, but pushing the higher tiers of the pit, you can still die regarding even if you have your ice armor up, enemies start to hit pretty hard. Now, ice armor is amazing with the changes. Shimmering ice armor means while we're casting blizzard, so every time you enter a fight, you cast ice armor, and then you just cast down blizzards, and then they'll be pretty much frozen. You will hit flame shield, you go in with arc lash, and that'll pretty much be the mob wiped. Now, while ice armor is active, you reduce its cooldown by two seconds. This is almost back every time as a cycle, and that's the goal. So to get that, inevitably off of cooldown, along with Flame Shield, will help you to stay super survivable, especially for high tier pit. Three in a lucky hit, we need that lucky hit chance, especially with this build. One into there, uh, three mana shield, three protection, pretty straightforward for the defense. Two in a barrier. Now, if you are dying a bit more, and you have pretty good resource, you don't need the five points into Arclash. You could take those extra four points out, and put one into Icy Val and, and go Snap Freeze for, for, again, a lucky hit chance to freeze, or even uh, a chance to apply more chill, depending on what you feel necessarily. One for Blizzard, pretty straightforward, all the way to increasing its duration. We don't need the five points into Blizzard again because it's an Ice Spike build. One into Inner Flames, three into Devouring Blaze because Devouring Blaze is still amazing. We're constantly applying Burning, and we're applying so many forms of crowd control, we're almost getting a 30% crit multiplier consistently. Three points into Permafrost, three into Icy Touch, three into Hoarfrost, all for the damage. Two into Unstable Currents. Now, while you are leveling, if you are struggling with resource and you have decent survivability, don't go five into Arclash. Take those points out, put them into Frigid Breeze and run Avalanche. You will have really good resource cost. But once you have an Umbral Ring and your resource cost is pretty good, you can take that point out and put it into Veer's Mastery. Now, for the pit while leveling, to make it nice and easy for you, Veer's Mastery is giving you 15% increased damage from shot skills, which we're applying with Arc Lash and with Unstable Currents. But more importantly, it's giving us the damage reduction um, along with our gear and our pants using the Veer's Mastery Key Passive. The damage reduction is very, very good to have. Now, into the Paragon. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, start a build. We're just going to run Winter, because Winter is actually better this season. Uh, we'll go through into Icefall. Uh, we're going to use all the usuals. Uh, control. Uh, we're going to go into Elementalist. Uh, we're going to actually pick up a couple of those DR uh, to shield enemies, which is nice to have. Non-physical damage. Uh, we're going to go across into Ice Spike damage, which is very important. 
uh, we're going to go into destruction and then finally into exploit now there's a lot more testing i have fallen short on time for so i finally just got the crafting material for tempering where i can apply 108 percent ice spike damage instead of flat damage on both my wand and my focus for a weapon so that would be very nice to try instead of damage however the damage is not just proccing ice spikes it's also proccing arc lash so there's a bit more testing i need to do and i'll work on that during the next season guys if you've enjoyed this build i would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button it's absolutely free uh thank you so much for the support and if you've made it this far through the video video i really appreciate you helping support a small streamer like myself i'm live on twitch on thursdays and saturdays you can come find me um, in the description below um, but otherwise, I look forward to seeing you all for the next one. Stay tuned for just a little bit of uh, pet gameplay. Uh, I'm going to kind of crop it to keep it short because this build's gone a bit too long. But thank you so much. Uh, I'll see you all in Season 4.